Welcome to Interparty Conflict, the podcast where we answer your questions so you can have the best tabletop gaming experience possible. My name is Gabe. And all things considered, my name is Jeff. And we are going to answer your questions today. But first, I have a question. Jeff, how long should I keep this gag going for? As long as you want, Gabe. <laughs> that sounded really good. Uh, all right. Yeah. So how are you doing today, Jeff? <laughs> Not too bad. Uh, um, been uh, keep trying, to, trying to remember every single night to put up a friend quest episode. And I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to stick to it. I told, I, you know, I, I posted on the subreddit and I told myself I'm going to just, you know, do what I can and make sure to put something up every single day. Mm hmm. Just so I, you know, have get into the routine of it. So yeah. I just so I don't like don't so I don't stop because you know we're having you know we're having fun, and I want to keep it going. So yeah. So you know, like I've been I didn't get a lot of sleep last night because I like <laughs> I was like crawling into bed and I got all cozy and I was like I just brushed my teeth and like you know I was just like oh, okay crap <laughs> forgot to do this <laughs> right and then like i gotta remember to do it tonight in which tonight i have to i have to uh sync a new session oh, so man. which takes a little extra time but it's you know it's gonna hit with some torpedoes <laughs> what i'll sink, sink it sink it <laughs> da, 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 da. okay <laughs> how about yourself gabe how you doing um i'm doing doing all right i uh um I started getting a little bit of a sore throat a couple of days ago, so I apologize to our listeners for all of the awkward edits I'm probably going to have to make sure. to edit around myself uh, clearing my throat. Yeah. But uh, it hasn't gotten that bad, and I, I think this is probably the worst it's going to get. So uh, speaking on that a little bit, like uh, I'm, I'm like you listen to our voices a lot more than I do because mm-hmm. you do all the editing. Yeah. Uh, editing friend quest, I've been hearing myself talk a lot more, and I'm like, I am a lot more nasally than I thought I was. Although. Yeah. I've noticed that like I get congested oh. when I talk more. So like the longer I talk, the more congested I get. I don't know, something with my sinuses hmm. or something. So like the other day before uh, Griff and I recorded, I went and got some decongestant and like did it, it help? Yeah, it helped a little bit. Okay. Although I f- I feel like I was getting some weird side effects of of it, so I might have to look into a different you know, a, a different medication or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you but. took the one that also had poison in it. Dang it! You probably shouldn't have shouldn't have taken that one. Nah. <laughs> you're, in regards to your voice being a bit more nasally, it might be the uh, where you have your mic positioned. Sure. Because I remember when I was in high school in video class, learning that uh, the mic being above, like ba- the mic being like at your eye level or above, gets a bit more sound from your nose, so it okay. will be a bit more nasally. Interesting. And then if you have it lower, it'll be a bit more like lower because it's getting the vibrations from like your throat and your chest that's interesting yeah i guess that makes sense um i'm also working towards uh converting part of my basement into like a little little bit uh better for recording because it's mm-hmm. echo it's echoey down there so yeah like, yeah because i have to have the microphone so close to my face to prevent echoing sure so i don't have to talk so loud to get the you know to hear my voice clearly it's then close to my face and you're hearing all the little extra like nasally and yeah. like, mouth noises and, and stuff. I think I remember you saying that when you play video games, you generally hold your nose closed with one <laughs> hand while you're doing it. Yeah. I have uh, for, for, Well, from back in the day when I used to play Nintendo 64 a lot, I grew yeah. a third arm oh, right. so I can use that controller. But now I use that arm to hold my nose. Well, so. you had to have a third hand because the middle of your palm got a horrible scar on right, it due to playing, playing Mario Party. Mario Party, the tug of war. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah exactly. Yeah, so, uh, man, <laughs> so, what we go through for, for games. So after that happened, my <laughs> um, my third arm mutated, and, you know, that's... <laughs> sure. you, you guys know the story. Right, right. Uh, so so speaking of games, uh-huh. um, I want to lay down some concrete details about this uh, arcade stream we're going to be doing, because when this episode goes up, it's going to be in less than a week. Oh, yeah, that's right. So on Labor Day, I will have already posted about this on social media, but on Labor Day, September 3rd, 2018, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we are going to be streaming arcade games from 6 p.m. Eastern Time to 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Yeah. We're going to be doing it through YouTube, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So uh, we will. if you miss it, you'll probably be able to go back and watch it at a later time if you want to, I guess. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so it'll be for about three hours. It'll be primarily me for however long Jeff wants to be there. We might yeah. even try to get a couple more people over for uh, some four player games. Yeah. I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'm sure I'll be there for the for the majority, if not all of it. So. Sure. Sure. And hey, I'll maybe I'll make a, I'll grill some stuff up before then. <gasps> awesome. 
We'll see. Uh, and so if if you want, if there are specific games that you would like to watch us play, whether mm-hmm. you're going to be there or not, I was thinking you guys can email us a request. So if you want to request games that you want us to play, even mm-hmm. if you're not going to be there. Send us an email at thefriendquest at gmail.com. Yes. And I'll put uh, friend request in the subject line. I was th- well, Okay. I was thinking put the, the name of the game in the subject line. But. And put the name of the game in the subject line. <laughs> there you go. Um, yes, yeah, so just so we have them all in, in one one place and yep. like we can look at the list and just scroll through and be, you know, if we want to pick randomly, we can roll a die or something like that. Sure, sure. Or if we see one that we really want to play, pick that and then play yeah. it for a bit. No, I'll make an elaborate like like spinning wheel <laughs> thing. I mean, that would be awesome. <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe, maybe if there's only like a few, if you only get like a few requests. Sure, sure. And, we'll and I'll, some I'll of... try to have like a list of games that I would like to play for a little while. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, you got you got tons of games on your on your machine. We'll so many out. games. I was I had family over the other day and we were trying to just scroll through all of the games that are there. And if I had like 10 games, I would probably play all 10 of those games and have a great time. Uh-huh. When I have like 10,000 games. I don't know. Yeah, you don't know what it's to like, play. It's like, what am I going to play? Every time I pick a game, it's like I, sh- I feel like I should be playing something else. Yeah, you just watch The Office. Pretty much. Pretty <laughs> much. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, yeah. So so um, September 3rd, 2018, from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., we're going to be doing the uh, our Friend Quest stream of arcade games. Mm-hmm. So... You guys should all check that out. Again, it'll be on, on social media, but just in case, you know, just in case you have not seen that. Anyway, so enough of uh, enough of all of that video game talk. Jeff, would you like to get into this episode? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. I want you to imagine that mm-hmm. you are a lowly carpenter. Okay. You've been you've been uh, living in your fantasy world in the this kingdom of something or other, and you've been doing your work, and you found out that just recently. The princess has been kidnapped. Oh, no. She was kidnapped by an evil fire-breathing dragon. Oh, no. Uh, And they have put out a call for any heroes to go rescue her. And you realize that, like, for whatever reason, there are no heroes. You're the only hero there is. You have to (laughs) step up and you have to become this hero. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't know of any heroes in this land. I, I got a hammer. There you go. So, yeah, you grab your your trusty hammer. And you you put on your your belt and you head out and you start you travel through the underground waterways Ooh. to get to the evil dragon's uh, castle because he has a castle for some reason. Yeah. And so you you're going through there. You're killing, uh, you know, giant like uh, uh, fire breathing plant monsters. And Ugh. then and then there are these these slow moving uh, myconids they are like those like fungus creatures. You kill a bunch of them on oh, the way man. through. I'm um, stopping those guys. Exactly. And then eventually you, you come out, you come out of this underground waterway into a big chamber, but you realize that you've made a wrong turn. Oh no. You're not in the evil dragon's throne room where he has the, the princess captive. You have instead stumbled upon the dragon's horde. <laughs> So the, the princess is in another part of the castle. <laughs> I didn't even mean for that, but yes. Okay. Yes, she is. So <laughs> I think you you sort of were, were getting what I was laying down pretty early. Uh, so the item today was inspired by a certain epic tale involving a lowly... Uh, Mario was originally a carpenter. Oh, was he? In Donkey Kong. He didn't even have the name Mario yet. His name was Jumpman. Jumpman. But he was a carpenter, not a plumber. Yeah, well, there, there was like a few other alternate names they had for him too, or something. I can't remember. I, I don't know, but uh, it was so, like just like middle aged man or something, some, something like that. <laughs> I don't yeah. Know. So, so anyway, this item is called Kuribo's shoe, and Ooh. this was actually made by myself. So, uh, sorry, listeners, but I just I had this idea and I had to had to write it out and thought it would be a great item for D and D. Yeah. So, if anyone's not familiar, this was an item in uh, Super Mario Brothers 3. Yeah. It was in one level. Uh-huh. Just one level. Yeah, it was, it's but it's one of the greatest it's oh it's so it's good. It's so good. It's okay. So let's let's get into this. Yeah. This artifact has been passed down for generations by a society of myconids living in the underdark. Ooh. It is said that one day a chosen warrior will come and use the shoe to liberate the land from an evil warlord. Mm. Kuribo's shoe is a giant shoe roughly the height of a human. 
If a creature of medium size climbs inside, they gain the ability to make immense leaps of destructive power. That power, however, is fragile and easily lost. Mm. While in the shoe, the wearer is able to move at their normal speed by leaping from place to place. The wearer can ignore difficult terrain as well as any terrain-based damage, including caltrops. Cool. And they never need to make an acrobatics check to maintain balance due to slippery or slanted floors. As an action, the wearer of Kuribo's shoe can make a special leaping attack at a target within range. When making this attack, make an acrobatics check with advantage. The target creature... Uh, the target creature must make a dexterity saving throw versus the result of the roll. Failure means the target is knocked prone and takes 2d10 damage plus your strength modifier. If the target has an ability or feature that causes damage or some unwanted effect when hit, such as a mimic's adhesive ability, the wearer of the shoe may ignore that ability or feature. Ooh. Additionally, if the wearer of the shoe takes damage while wearing it, uh, they are immediately ejected from the shoe and land standing in a square next to the shoe at which point i guess the attacker could then in theory jump inside the shoe jump inside the shoe so yeah so uh <laughs> so yeah this item it's i think it's it's pretty cool yeah yeah um it's a big old shoe it's that a big you old hop shoe. inside you, you you hop around <laughs> you can jump on stuff you can walk on you know piranha plants or whatever those little black things are that damage you when you walk on them right yeah they're yeah they're like the little like yeah, they're not like piranha plants, but they're like the little, like the black little, like just little like, snapper things, snapper yeah. guys. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. So, so I thought this was fun. This is such a such a weird item yeah. in that game. Uh, absolutely, and it's just it's great. I would love to to jump around in a giant shoe and and hop on stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it only appears like in like. Is it? I, is it I just literally one think it's one level. I could, yeah. I could be wrong, but yeah, it might, it might be like. I don't know, it might be a couple of them. Or they might like call back to it in like a later level or something. But I don't know, maybe. But like the uh it's it's used in uh Mario Maker. Like it's Is a, it really? Yeah, it's a thing you can put in Mario Maker to the okay. I think to the effect there's like giant ones too. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. This is yeah, that's a yeah, that's such a fun little item. Like, yeah, you I've I've always remembered it because like yeah, because you're just kinda like Mario's head's just peeking out the top of it, and you're just kind of hopping around. <laughs> but yeah, that's a really cool idea. So you're yep. just kind of like hopping from place to place, and you don't take terrain, you know, damage or anything like that. Yeah. And it's important to note that if you if you want to, you can still you don't have to use the the leaping attack. You can still attack as normal or cast spells or whatever from the shoe. Sure. Because if you get the shoe in the game with a fire flower, you oh man. You just yeah, you're unstoppable. You might as well win the game right then and there because you can <laughs> jump around, shoot fireballs. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Curry Bow's shoe submitted by uh, a handsome gentleman by the name of Gabe, <laughs> and uh, yeah, cool. so so that's uh, I, I hope that made sense. Yeah, makes me want to uh, come up with like a Tanuki suit. Oh uh, man, that'd be I mean that that would be pretty easy to. Yeah. I think that'd be pretty easy to translate. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, That'll do it for the Dragon's Horde today. Mm -hmm. If anybody wanted to submit items for the Dragon's Horde or questions for us to discuss or stories for the funeral pyre, how would they get those to us? They could send us an email at interpartyconflict at gmail.com. Yes. All right. We have, as we do every week now, we have a giveaway. Oh, we do. To give away today. So, Jeff, who is our winner today? Our winner today is Colin W. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Winner. winner. Oh. Gobble, gobble. Yes, congratulations, Colin W. You have won a chapel. Sorry, you have won a copy of Chapel on the Cliffs from Goblin Stone. Uh huh. So uh, <laughs> that was good. Sorry, sorry. I was gonna make comment on your on your slip up there. He, yeah, he won the chapel. He just gets the whole thing. <laughs> he gets the whole chapel. Yeah, yeah. So be sure to let uh, Goblin Stone know what you think of the the adventure. Mm -hmm. And then if you uh, if you haven't gotten it within a couple days, let us know. But, uh, you know, it should be should be coming to your email pretty soon. Just be sure to check your spam folder as cool. well. If somebody wanted to enter this drawing, Jeff, mm -hmm. uh, how would they how would they do that? Oh, uh, well, they could send us an email at interpartyconflict at gmail.com, but they would put Chapel on the Cliffs in the subject line. There you go. And then whatever they want in the rest of the email. Sure. Why not? <laughs> All right. So, yeah, big thank you to Goblin Stone for uh, for getting our, our listeners that uh, wonderful prize. Yeah. And uh, I also want to mention that we have a Patreon. Mm -hmm. um, Patreon, for anybody who doesn't know, Patreon is uh, an online service, I guess, where you can sign up to support your favorite podcast or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you pledge a certain amount of money per month. You know, could be a dollar, 
could be $2, could be $5, $10, whatever. And then in in return for your donation, you get some uh, some cool rewards from us. Yeah. So we've got three different tiers, dollars, $5, $10. And then uh, we have outtakes on there. We've got fantasy fiction written by me. Yeah. I actually uh, just, as of this recording, just today, I put up this month's fantasy fiction. Oh, cool. So that one uh, I think is a lot of fun. People nice. should, uh, should read that. We also have bonus episodes for, uh, for $5 and up. We've got a uh, monthly Patreon game, which uh, by the time this episode goes up, will actually have been already passed. But when we're recording this, it's going on tomorrow. So I'm, I'm uh, excited about that. Awesome. I recently talked about how we, we, we're going to be opening that up to, if we didn't have enough people, we're going to be opening that up to the $5 tier as well. So we have a couple $5 tier people in, uh, in this month's game. And awesome. I, I'm really excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, if you're, you know, if you're in the $10, $10 tier, you can come right in the game. But mm-hmm. you know, if we're, if we're, if we need like to fill out the group, well, we extend that to the $5 tier. Right. And we generally play Tuesday evenings, mm-hmm. um, just because Tuesday is one of my days off and, uh, it's, it's just the easiest day to, to fit something into. So it'll, sure. it'll usually be on a, a Tuesday evening, uh, during the month. Yeah. So, yeah. So if you want to, if you like our show, you like hearing us talk and you want to help us make the show better, go to patreon.com slash interparty conflict and uh, see w- if the rewards look good to you. Yeah. Um, also, just one more thing. I want you to check out Crit Academy. It's a great podcast, critacademy.com. They make uh, new and reusable content for DMs and players alike. They have lots of fun stuff every week, so check them out. Also, D&D Character Lab is another podcast on our network. They, uh, Garen and Dan make characters and pit them against each other. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot of fun. Both those podcasts are great. You should go listen to them and then uh, and and go from there. You want to get into this episode? Yeah, sure. Let's get going. Cool. Our first question comes from at Carl Linsmeyer on Twitter, and they ask, how does grappling work? And how did it work in other editions? Yeah. So a little, just let me give a little backstory on this question. Yeah. I was on Twitter and I was, uh, we don't get a ton of, we've got maybe one or two other uh, questions submitted on Twitter. And I was on Twitter and somebody was, was posting about like rules that you hate or something. I don't remember the exact context context. Yeah. And I said something about like, I hate grappling. I've never understood how it works. I don't want to understand how it works. <laughs> it's awful. And then Carl here replied saying, well, I always found the easiest way to learn how to do something is to explain it to somebody else. And my response was, uh, no, I don't I don't want to do I that. Don't, I don't want to learn how it works. <laughs> I don't want to have to explain how it works to somebody else. And he said, OK, well, I'm submitting a question to the podcast. <laughs> how does grappling work? And how did it work in other editions? <laughs> well done. So <laughs> thanks a lot, Carl. <laughs> now. To make it easier on Gabe, uh, I uh, I offered to take care of the third edition rules. Yes, and um, I I very much feel bad for Jeff's week that has just passed. <laughs> my poor print, up. my poor printer. I had to print out all the rules. <laughs> no, I wasn't. It's not as bad as I remember. It's especially so. So uh, you're going to cover uh, yeah. third edition and yeah. and or three point five. I guess they're, they're basically the same. Uh, yeah. Th- well, I. 3.5. Okay. Is, okay. Yeah, is, yeah. And then uh, I've got fourth edition and fifth edition. And I'll say fourth and fifth, I was actually shocked at how simple, simple they are. What I should have done is I should have looked up uh, Pathfinder as well. I thought of that, but honestly, I feel like the only difference is the roles were replaced with other roles. Sure. Uh, okay. So, I mean, I'll, I'll I'll say what I what I believe is the case when we get there. <laughs> sure. If we are incorrect listeners who play Pathfinder, yeah. I do apologize. Yeah. Uh, and and I guess a little disclaimer: this episode is going to be primarily D and D rules. So sure. we we don't usually have a lot of episodes that our episodes don't usually focus so much on the rules. Uh, as opposed, we try to make them rules agnostic whenever possible. But this episode is going to be pretty rules heavy. Yeah. So uh, yeah. if that is not your thing, I apologize. But uh, you know, we've still got some fun mm-hmm. later on. Yeah. I think. So which edition do you want to start with? Um, let's go get, go ahead and get the bad one out, okay, out of the way, right. I guess. <laughs> all right. So yeah, we'll start, we'll start with the third edition one then, uh, or rather 3.5. Uh, okay. So remembering, you know, the, the days of playing third edition and mm-hmm. thinking like, like, man, always having to like dig out, dig through the book to find the grapple rules. Anytime somebody wanted to grapple and you're just like, geez, okay. How does this work again? Um, so in 3.5 player's handbook, the grapple rules take up. A, about a page and a quarter. Yeah. So like an entire page of all grapple rules, plus like a couple paragraphs on the next page. Mm-hmm. Um, for comparison, fourth and fifth edition are each like 
two paragraphs each. Yeah. It's it's yeah. super easy. So, um, <clears throat> all right. So the way that grapple works in 3.5, mm-hmm. um, well, they have, uh, they define grapple checks. So grapple check is your base attack bonus, which is de- determined by your class mm-hmm. and, you know, and, and your level. It's uh, on the class chart. Strength modifier and a, a special size modifier. Right. So depending on your size, you get a modifier to your grapple check. So uh, if you're medium size, it's just zero. So like medium is the like the base. The the uh, the standard. Yeah. Because I mean, you know, most you know most if not all player races were were medium. Yeah, yeah. The gnomes and halflings were small, but but right. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, sorry, didn't mean to. Uh, you know, I'm, <laughs> just, I'm sorry, didn't mean we, to. Do you know how many halfling and gnome listeners we have, Jeff? Hey, you know what? My, halfling is one of my favorite races, to be honest. <laughs> okay. Like, for uh, for uh, for playing. Um. So yeah. Uh. So zero at at medium. Uh. If you're large, plus four. If you're small, minus four. Yeah. And then so and then each category beyond that is another four. So large plus four, huge plus eight. Mm-hmm. Um. All the way to uh colossal plus 16 oh my goodness yeah so you know it's basically the idea is like the bigger you are the harder you are to grapple Mm -hmm. and then you equals out so if you're you know two colossal beings grappling each other you're both getting a plus 16 so it kind of cancels out sure you know it's it it kind of begs the question like why not just have i guess it it might i guess it might be easier this way than saying like if for every size category lower or higher you get a minus four or a plus four or something Mm -hmm. like that so i guess that that way it's uh I think it's easier to keep track of this way. Yeah, yeah, probably. Just, everybody just has a flat bonus. You just know that this is what you have. Right, yeah. So that way, yeah, you don't have... So that the person attacking doesn't have to do the math. The math is already there sure, or something. Sure. Um, all right, so to actually start a grapple. So if I want to... If we're in combat... Yep. If Gabe and I are in combat and we're within reach of each other... Mm-hmm. To uh, initiate grapple. So I want to grapple you. Mm-hmm. So you're five feet away. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, basically, I'm going to be making an attack. Yeah. That is, and to initiate grapple, you're going to incur, an, I'm going to incur an attack of opportunity. Mm-hmm. So, because you're attacking, you basically, you're making an unarmed attack. Yes. Which in third edition did provoke. Right. So yeah, a gra- like initiating a grapple incurs an attack of opportunity from mm-hmm. the person that you're, uh, that you're trying to grapple. Right. If that person succeeds in attacking you and d- deals damage, you cannot grapple them. Okay. Um, there, there are ways to get around that, but I'll get, I'll go, I'll go through that later. Sure. All right. So I go to, uh, you know, I, I'm going to be making a, uh, touch, a melee touch attack against Gabe. So it he, ignores armor. So it ignores armor and shield, but not, uh, dexterity. Right. So because you're yeah. just trying to touch me, you're not actually right. trying to hit me hard enough to deal damage. Right. So yeah, because you're wearing a sh- uh, an armor, you, you know, I'm. I'm still going to be able to grab, I can grab mm-hmm. onto the armor, you know, so right. it doesn't matter that you have full plate, you know, it's, it's about as, it matters how quick you are from you getting away from me. So, sure. so yeah, in, in third, three, 3.5 edition, you had something called a touch AC, mm-hmm. which was basically just 10 plus your decks. Uh, you know, maybe there might be some other modifier you get from something else, but whatever. Right. Can, um, can't you guys see why, why yeah. we, we avoid it? And, and I got this question a couple months ago and sure. I've, I've been putting it off, but I yeah had to get it out of the way. So yeah, there's a lot of things to keep in mind. In, in 3.5 alone, not just in grappling. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so let's say, okay, I make the touch attack. I'm going to make the touch attack and Gabe misses his attack of opportunity. So it does not mm-hmm. do damage. So then I can then make my touch attack. Yeah. If I have multiple attacks in a round. Yeah. I can, I can try it multiple times. Okay. Right, now right. in 3. Point, in 3.5, multiple attacks, it's like, I think it's every... Uh, when you when your base attack becomes six, mm-hmm. you get a second attack at plus one. So for for every five points of your base attack bonus, you get an additional attack. So like, yeah, plus six and then plus one. Yeah, or then you at get a plus, plus level, eleven. Uh, what do you have plus eleven? Eleven, six, and one. Yeah, and then twenty. Or, f- no, or wait, twenty was twenty fifteen. Twenty fifteen, ten, and five would be if you're at level twenty. That would be like yeah, I think the most it. possible attacks you would get. So from that. so I mean, so your attempts would get lower and lower. You know attack bonus right but you would get more chances if you really wanted to grapple somebody you can throw all your attacks at them to do it mm-hmm. and then again this would incur attacks of opportunity if they had multiple attacks of opportunity right because again in in 3.5 
you got an attack of opportunity, but then there was like a feat that allows you to add your, uh, or you can, you, you can, can get lose. one per, there's a feat you can take that lets you get one per dexterity bonus. Right. So it's possible you could be attempting multiple times, but they could be, you know, every time just slap, slap you, yeah. slap you down. Yeah. It's just like a slap like, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so if that is successful, so if you manage to get their touch AC. Yeah. You haven't even started grappling no, yet. No, not at all. Like this. You're is, just trying to see if you can get a hold of them the first time. Yeah. So I'm just seeing if I can just touch you. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just putting my hands on you. Um, and uh, so, so that, so yes. <laughs> so step one is the uh, attack of opportunity. Step mm-hmm. two is grabbing you. So that's me grabbing you. Yep. And then step three is holding you. So the actual grapple is going to, you know, hopefully begin. Sure. Um, so you're going to make an opposed grapple check as a free action. I should have said at the top, uh, 3.5, your round consisted of a standard action, mm-hmm. a move action, yep. and then something called, uh, you can do something called a free action. And I think there were, was it swift action? They later made a lot of free actions into swift actions. Yeah. Which was a free action, but you only got one per round. It was like a, a bonus action in 5th yeah. in edition. They ba- yeah, they basically, it was like the, it was the precursor to bonus action yep. in a way. Um so, so as a free action, you were going to make a grapple check. So, you know, you make the attack to gra- to actually hit their AC or mm-hmm. touch AC, and then you're going to make the grapple check as a free action, opposed grapple check. So, so you're going to roll your grapple check, and they're going to roll their grapple check, and then you know the higher one wins. And then, so what? It, what do you actually roll for the grapple check? So, a grapple check is your base attack bonus plus your mo- strength modifier plus the size modifier. Okay. Okay. Right. Right. You covered yeah. that earlier. Yeah. So, yeah, that's um. Yeah, right. That's like, you know, we're several steps in. We got to go check. We got to check back at, you know. Right. Yeah. Um. So when you succeed on this check. Mm-hmm. So if I roll higher than you in this opposed grapple check, I am now grappling. Congratulations. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then uh, you deal damage as if uh, as if you hit him with an arm strike. OK. Which is kind of interesting that like it adds that little it adds that little damage in there. Yeah. And really, that's something that. Is is missing from later editions. So as part of the grapple, you do a bit of damage because yeah. you're like you're just you're, you're just you're beating gripping them, up. them. Yeah, yeah. You're you know you're putting your hands on them. You're you're using force. There's bound to be some you know some scuffing. Mm-hmm. Um, if you lose, you fail to start the grapple, uh, and then you automatically use if you attempt to hold a target if it is two or more size categories larger than you. Sure, and that's something that does continue throughout uh, the editions. Right. Yeah. In the case of a tie uh, for the grapple check, the combatant with the higher grapple check modifier wins. Interesting. That, I thought third edition was the one where tie always went to the defender, but that is not the case here. Yeah. Exa- like, uh, and I think fifth edition changes that a little fifth, bit. There. Yeah. Fifth edition is not the state does not change. Right. Yeah. If there's a tie, then nothing changes. So right. like if you're, so if you're initiating a grapple, the grapple does not get initiated. But if you're in a grapple and trying to escape, you just stay in the grapple right because the state is the same as it was before you tried yeah. your check oh so, sorry we're, we're crossing additions here. yeah sorry sorry <laughs> so yeah so if it's a tie then the person with the highest grapple check modifier wins mm-hmm. um so it's not the person who got lucky it's the person who is just better at what yeah. they're doing so who just has the better stat which i kind of like that actually yeah and then if that is a tie then you just roll again okay to maintain a grapple so this is for, mm-hmm. for for later for later rounds. So like now I'm grappling Gabe. Yeah. To maintain the grapple for later, uh, you must move into the target space, and this this counts as a free movement. Sure. This doesn't take up your uh the the, the movement is doesn't count as part of your movement for, in the round. Um. And then uh this this movement as normal provokes attacks of opportunity. Not from the person you're grappling, Not, but right. If you're about to grapple someone and their ally is standing next to them, yeah. their ally can get a free attack on you because you are moving into that enemy's space. Right. Which, don't think about it too much. Yeah. The, the, we don't want to get into attacks opportunity in this episode. It's too much for one episode. Yeah, that's just, yeah, that's... <laughs> and then if, by, if for any reason you can't move into that square, mm-hmm. you just, you the grapple ends. Okay. So, like, if, if, like if you can't, you know, I, I'm... I'm I can't think of any specific reasons why. Well, let's say you're trying to grapple them through a window. Sure. If okay. You you might not be able to get into that room. Maybe like you would have to, I don't know, make some sort of a check or something to get through the window. True. But you could still grab them and maybe still do that uh, that 
unarmed damage. Yeah. But then it would end because you can't uh, right. can't physically get in there. Or I'm trying to think of like specific monsters or something that like, I don't know, like an ooze or something. Oh, why yeah. Why are you trying to grapple an ooze anyway? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, so would, the, that, would that be easier or harder? Right. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm, I'm grabbing something, but right. it, but now I'm inside it. So Sorry, whoops. Go, go on. <laughs> so so yeah, if you um, to grapple again, you must begin at step one again. So yeah, like okay. so yeah, if you're if you can't move into their square, you cannot continue the grapple. Mm-hmm. While you're in a grapple, you uh, you do not threaten square uh, squares. Okay, so you can't get attacks opportunity on anybody else, right? Even if they're moving yeah. around you, moving away from you, right? You're, whatever. You're you're occupied with the grapple. You don't threaten squares around you. You just you're just threatening the person you're grappling. Right. Same as the person you're grappling, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. This is just consequences while you're grappling. You know, your ability to attack others and defend yourself is limited. That's mm-hmm. what it says here. Um, no dexterity bonus. So because you're basically locked in a in a spot holding somebody down or being held by somebody, you mm-hmm. don't get the benefits of your dexterity bonus. So if you're grappling, if you're grappling my buddy, it's easy for me to attack you. Right. Because you're busy grappling him. Right. Uh, no movement. So you can't no, more normally move while grappling. Mm-hmm. Um, you can make a grapple check, an imposed grapple check to move while grappling. Okay. So the the idea is that like if you want to move if you're grappling somebody if you want to move them somewhere you're mm-hmm. going to make an opposed grapple check and then I believe it's half your half your movement. Okay. So that's that's like one half of the page here. <laughs> the other half of the page is stuff that you can do while grappling. Okay. Uh, thing thing like it gives you rules to doing specific things while grappling. Um, using a magic item as long as it's not like it doesn't have a uh, a completion trigger so like a like a scroll does. Okay. If it doesn't have a trigger, then you don't need to make a grapple check to use it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I assume otherwise that you just norm, you just make a grapple check if you want to do something a little bit more complicated. I guess. Okay. Um, attacking your opponent, you can use a natural weapon, mm-hmm. an unarmed strike, mm-hmm. or a light weapon against the the, the you know the person in the grapple. Sure. Uh, you take a minus four penalty on such attacks, and you can attack with two weapons uh, while grappling, even if both are light weapons. So okay. you're you're going to have to have at least one arm on the guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you can you can you know be holding them with one hand, and you can use a light weapon in the other hand, or just punch them, or or if you have claws or whatever, mm-hmm. you can use that. Just you're just taking a minus four on that. Uh, casting a spell, you can attempt to cast a spell while grappling, even when you're or or even while pinned, provided that the casting oh. time is no more than one standard action. Has no somatic component, uh, somatic components. So, oh, okay, okay. So like, if you're pinned, you can use something that has only verbal components because right. you just need to speak. Um, and then you have, uh, you know, haven't had any material components or focuses you might need. Yeah, because I, I always thought of uh, grappling as like the way you lock down casters yeah. because so many spells require somatic components. Mm-hmm. They just can't do somatic components while grappled. But right. if they have still spell, for example, you could mm-hmm. you could in theory cast uh, spells without them. Um, so if it is a spell that you can cast while you're grappled, because mm-hmm. uh, like some, some of them have, might have a little bit more like... Like there's like this, the ones that you redraw a circle on the ground or something like that. Sure, sure. Obviously can't do that. So if it's something that you can uh, you can cast, you're going to have to make a concentration check of DC 20 plus the spell's level or you lose the spell. Okay. Uh, and then you don't, if, you know, if you meet all of that, you don't have to roll a uh, successful grapple check to cast a spell. It, it does say that you can do, you can be casting spells while pinned. Okay. But uh, I guess I'll go into pin a little bit later, but pinning is like the step above grappling. Yeah. Like you're basically you're you're going to you're going to pin them down even harder, I guess. And while they're pinned, you can uh you can basically like you can cover their mouth. Oh, so, okay. So like there is a way to go even further to prevent somebody from casting a spell or something like that. Yeah. So like if you know, if if it is if it is a spell with a verbal component, like if you got them pinned, you can there is a way for you to to stop so them. they can't cast right. anything right so you can, you can try to lock them down as best you can all right uh you can uh, as part of grappling you can be damaging your opponent so you know like a sort of like a chokehold sort of a thing mm-hmm. so you're you're going to be making uh unarmed basically an unarmed strike but you're going to be using your grapple check in place of an attack so your opposed grapple check if you win you deal non-lethal uh damage as normal for your unarmed strike mm-hmm. uh Let's see. It's one d three if you're medium, one d two if you're small. You sure. Know. So if you want to deal lethal damage, you're going to take a minus four a penalty on your grapple check. Okay. So, um, because was it? I think it's the opposite when you're attacking normally. 
If you want to deal non-lethal damage in 3.5, you take a minus four to your attack. Yeah. I think that's the case. If you, yeah. So if, if you don't have an improved armor strike. Right. Um, draw a light weapon to, mm-hmm. you know, to stab him with that, which because you can attack with a light weapon in a, in a grapple. You have to make a successful grapple check in order to get your weapon out. So if you don't sure, sure. already have that at the ready, getting it out, it's going to take some doing. Um, escaping from the grapple is uh, done by winning an opposed grapple check in place of making an attack. Uh, so, you know, um, so when it's Gabe's turn, he can use his attack, one of his attacks to escape the grapple. Uh, you can also instead make an escaped artist checked in place of your grapple check if you, if you desire. So if you have more skill points in, uh, an escape artist, then you can slip out of, of the, of the sure, grapple. Sure, sure. Um, this requires a standard action to do. Okay. Now here's a question. Um, let's say I'm grappled. I use my action or I use an attack or whatever. I use, make a grapple check to escape the grapple. Mm-hmm. I'm still within melee range of the guy. If I try to move away, he's going to get an attack of opportunity. Could mm-hmm. he then use that attack of opportunity to grapple me again? Hmm. Okay, yeah, that would be more in the specifics of the uh, opportunity attack sure. uh, rules. So, yeah, standard action to use a escape artist or, or use an attack to make a opposed grapple roll. So mm-hmm. you could, again, with multiple attacks be attempting to escape multiple times. But but each successive time is going to get harder and harder. Yeah, exactly. Um, Or you can just use your whole standard action to use the escape artist uh, skill. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is where it gets a little even more complicated. They have rules for multiple grapplers. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Here, let me go. Carl, this is your fault. (laughs) So... We can leave this in. <laughs> I just be fumbling with all these rules. Um, they have rules for multiple for multiple grapplers, uh, so you can basically just have people piling on and on. Up to four combatants can grapple a single opponent in a given round. So I, uh, you know, just really dog pile on that thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, creatures that are one or more size categories smaller than you count for half. So if you're trying to escape. From being grappled by multiple people, you you have to choose which one you're trying to get rid of. So like mm-hmm. you're not making like a like a you're not just doing a brah and getting out of everybody. Oh, that'd be cool if you could though, right? Um, but again, if you had multiple attacks, you could like okay, you got one guy you know is good at grappling, one that you know is not. I'm gonna mm-hmm. make my first attempt on this guy, my second attempt on this other guy. Sure. Like hopefully you get out of both of them. Um, if you want to join in a grapple, a grapple, uh, you can use uh, an attack to start a grapple as above. Uh, except the target does not get an attack of opportunity because he is grappled. Oh, yeah. That's part of the, the deal. Yeah. Um, uh, so, and then your grab automatically succeeds. Oh, okay. So because basically because they're being held in place, like your, 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 uh, you know, the touch attack to grab them mm-hmm. succeeds automatically. They don't get the attack of opportunity. You just have to then make the opposed uh, grapple check. Sure. If there are multiple opponents of, so like, let's say, your friend's being grappled by two guys, mm-hmm. and you want to join in to help. Uh, you're gonna pick one to make the opposed grapple check against. So you're you're basically you're 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 picking which side of the pile you're getting in on. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, so it spoke already about about pinning. So pinning your opponent, you're basically making an opposed grapple check to make them to hold them uh, immobile for a round. Mm-hmm. So like, if you if you want to keep somebody pinned, you have to make a you have to be making a grapple check. You know, like to 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 do so. Okay. Um, you're doing that uh, as an attack. So instead of instead of attacking them with a with a light weapon or something, you're gonna instead pin them down. So you make a, an opposed grapple check. You win that. They're pinned. Sure. So when somebody has you pinned, they have to keep succeeding to keep you down. Mm-hmm. But once like it, once you're pinned for a round, you're pinned for a round unless somebody else comes and helps you. Okay. So I guess that I guess that's really the 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 benefit there is like you can you can lock them down for a round Mm -hmm. and they won't be able to do anything to you. So if you're pinned by an opponent, when an opponent has (laughs) when opponent has pinned you, you are held in mobile but not helpless for one round. While you're pinned, you take a minus four penalty to your AC against your against opponents other than the one pinning you. and then that's in addition to your dexterity not being used. Right. So you're taking another you know, minus four to your, to your AC. Um, at your opponent's option, you may also be unable to speak. 
So they can be pinning you down and like holding, sure, you know, holding sure. their arm, you know, their hand over your mouth or something. Yeah. Uh, on your turn, you can try to escape uh, the pin by making an opposed grapple check in place of an attack, uh, or you can make an es- escape artist uh, check in place of your grapple, and and that costs a standard action. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you win, you escape the pin, but you're still grappling. Okay, so it's just an extra level of grapple. Sure, sure. So, so like someone they touch you, make a grapple check to have you grappled. If they succeed, yep, you are grappled. They can then spend another attack to grapple you further to pin you. If they succeed, you are then pinned. To escape, you have to either make a grapple check or an escape artist check to become grappled again, not mm-hmm. pinned. Right, and then you have to do it again in order to not be grappled. Right. Okay, so so if somebody who is really proficient in grapple is mm-hmm. going to be using, like, yeah, use an attack to get you. Yeah. And, it, and, like, if they have multiple attacks, they, yeah, they can have an attack to grab you, attack to grapple you, attack to pin you. And then, so then you also, then you have to make, you know, you know, those several different, you know, checks to get out of it. Yeah. So while you're pinning an opponent, you can use their weapon against them. Oh, that's kind of neat. Yeah. You can attempt to use your opponent's weapon against them, and you can attempt to move uh, move the grapple. You can use the disarm action to remove a, or grab away a well-secured object worn by the pinned opponent. Um, mm-hmm. But they get a plus four to their roll to resist the attempt. Uh, this is the, the disarm attempt. Sure, sure. Which is another mechanic we're not going to yeah, we're, we're not going to worry about it it's, today. It's similar where it's like an opposed check sort mm-hmm. of thing. You may voluntarily release the pin cre- uh, you know character at, at any at any point as a free action. If you do so, they're no longer considered to be grappled. Um, so yeah, and and um, yeah yeah at any point when you're grappling somebody, you can just let them go as a free action. Mm-hmm. So to use an opponent's weapon while you're pinning them, uh, if if it's a light weapon Mm -hmm. you can use an attack to hit them um make an opposed grapple check in place of an attack and if you win make an attack roll with that weapon with a minus four penalty so you make a grapple check and then an attack roll with a minus four right as part of the same attack action goodness remember that this is all in the same round yeah this could be all in the same round yeah sorry sorry how how jumbled this all is like i mean that's that's how it was though yeah this is really like Jeff is doing a very good job of representing <laughs> what grappling was like. I'm glad you think so. I feel like, <laughs> like even even after reading this and like highlighting a few things that I like I I was gonna bring up, mm-hmm. like it was I was I was sort of confused at first as like what if they meant when they said a make a successful touch attack if they were talking about the grapple check or just a touch attack. Oh yeah, no, that's, and I guess that's the touch separate. attack would just be like your uh, base attack plus your uh, I guess. Um, Strength, I guess. Strength yeah. or dex, maybe. Well, because it was back then, all all melee attacks were melee were strength, unless you had uh, weapon finesse, oh, which, yeah, which an unarmed feat. attack would count as. Yes. would would be finessable, but right. So yeah. in some cases, dexterity, but most cases, strength. You know. So basically, ha- being a fighter with high strength <sighs> means you will always win, all the time. Yeah. Every every one of these rolls that you're making, yeah. you're, you're going to win. Just yeah, having a high strength is just, is very helpful in this. Um. I think that's most, yeah, that's most of it. Uh, again, sorry. Like the, I think the only thing I didn't really cover was movement. I think, yeah, I think it was just, you can move somebody with you and all others engaged, engaged in the grapple by winning an opposed grapple check, uh, which requires a standard action. Okay. That's a ter- okay. That's that, actually that is different. a change. Yeah. Yeah. So to move the party, to move the grapple party, you use a standard action, make an opposed grapple check and you must beat all other individual check results. To move the grapple. Okay. Um, this is uh, this is at a plus four bonus if you're pinning them. So if you're oh, if, they're, okay. if they're pinned, you have an easier time moving them. I guess. Sure, sure. Uh, and then you move uh, half your speed. Is, is that as part of that standard action? You move half your speed. I, I I assume I assume what it is is like you're you're using your standard action to get them in line, mm-hmm. and then you're using your move action at half speed. Okay. Okay. To to move where you want to go. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. Um. So yeah, that's. It's basically that's basically it. Uh, again, sorry. It's, it's <laughs> that's that's fine. Um, and uh, then I want to add what makes grappling so much worse. Yeah, is monsters with the improved grab ability. Right. I haven't even. Yeah. Well, I'm. <laughs> I have some extra here. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. Sorry. Go on. I don't so want to step on your step on your toes. Sorry. Sorry. So, um, so in third edition, there were the there there were feats, mm-hmm. and one of the feats that you could get was improved, uh, improved grappling. Okay. 
Well, that's that's different than improved grab. But go on, go on. Well, what's different with improved grab? It's with improved grab, you automatically grapple anytime you make an attack, basically. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. So, like a wolf, for example, if it hits you with its attack, it immediately initiates a grapple. Okay. Just for free. Yeah. That um, actually, fifth edition has monsters have stuff like that too. Oh. Okay. Um, but but grappling in general is is a lot less powerful than it was. True. Um, so yeah, like with improved grapple, you don't incur an attack of opportunity mm-hmm. and you get a plus four to your uh, to your grapple checks. Yes. So yeah. like you basically count as a size bigger and you don't incur attacks of opportunity. So you don't have yep. to, you don't have to worry about that. However, in complete warrior, mm-hmm. there is uh, a couple feats that involve the uh, uh, grapple. And then there's also a prestige class. I won't go too far into it. Sure, sure. Uh, but there is uh, clever wrestling, which is a uh, which is a feat. Uh, prerequisite is that you're a smaller medium size and you have improved on arm strike, which uh, is also a requirement for improved grapple. Yeah. Um, you When your opponent is larger than medium, you gain a circumstance bonus on your grapple check to escape uh, the grappler pin. And it, uh, the bonus that you get depends on the size. So what it basically does is it cuts in half the bonus that they're getting for being larger than oh, you. Oh, okay. But just Effect. for escaping. For, but just for you escaping. So if somebody's, if a, if a large, if, a, if, um, if you're medium and a large, uh, if a large creeper creature is grappling you, mm-hmm. you get a plus two to your grapple checks or, or escape artist checks to, uh, to get out of that grapple. Sure. So like, you know, they're getting a plus four because they're large, but you're getting a plus two because they're large. So they're effectively getting half of their bonus. Mm-hmm. And then it goes up from there for, you know, plus four, if they're huge, plus six, if they're gargantuan plus eight, if they're colossal. Sure. So uh, yeah, again, it's effectively cutting their bonus in half. Um, and then there is close quarters fighting, which is sort of like the counter to the improved grapple. Okay. Or, uh, or, um, improved grab. Uh, whether they have that or not, you make it an, an attack of opportunity. On oh, top, okay. Yeah. On top of that, the damage that you do gets added to your uh, your grapple check. Ooh, that's good. So yeah, because like the, in normal cases, creatures with crew grapple or crew grab or similar feats or special abilities do not provoke attacks of opportunity, but with close quarters feet, it does. They do. Uh, this may be selected as a bonus, whatever. Okay. Um. And then just to, just to lightly touch on the prestige class, uh, it is called the Reaping Mauler, I believe. Yeah, it is called the Reaping Mauler. Mm-hmm. Prestige classes, for those of you who don't know, in third edition, uh, is like it's a class that you could take on top of the class that you have. Or I mean, you uh, you, you switch from your current yeah, class yeah. to the prestige class, but generally you have to have prerequisites that you got from your main class. Yeah. That let you qualify for the prestige class. Yeah. And in some cases is like they, the prerequisites are specific to a class, but mm-hmm. not always. Yeah. Uh, this one, you need a plus five base attack bonus. So you basically need to have uh, at least five levels of a class. Of, a, of a fighting a, class. Of a fighting class. Yeah. Or you can have, you know, a couple levels of fighting class and a couple of, and, and like a few more of something. Sure. Uh, the example character is a level five rogue, rogue level two uh, fighter. Okay. Because, uh, like, the rogue doesn't get base attack as fast as a fighter does. Mm-hmm. Um, you also need five ranks in escape artist, five ranks in tumble, and those are skills. Yeah. Uh, those, those are both part of uh, acrobatics now, I believe. Right, yeah. Uh, and then uh, you need the feats Clever Wrestling, which is from the same book that the Prestige class is in, and then Improved Unarmed Strike. Um, and then it also has a special re- prerequisite, which some class, well, some prestige classes did, which were generally pretty cool. Yeah, some of them were pretty cool. Some of them were really, sort of like, when am I going to have time to do that? Sure. Can I just can I just not have to do that, DM? Thanks. You know. <laughs> uh, but this one is the candidate must have defeated at least three opponents one size category larger than himself uh, with his bare hands. Okay. So and it says defeated. So yeah. you could say like an arm wrestle. That works, yeah. You know, like you arm wrestled somebody, you know, somebody larger larger than you. You know, three. You you know, you beat three three ogres in a in an arm wrestling match or something. Sure, sure. I'd say that would count. Um, and then it goes through like the abilities that they get. Now, I'll bring this up. I brought this up earlier uh, when we were talking about this. That sometimes prestige classes in three in three uh, three point five, like the thing that they're focused on. So in this case, grappling. Mm-hmm. One of the things that the class would, the prestige class would give you, uh, usually at like level one, mm-hmm. or even sometimes even further in the the class, would be something that if you wanted, if I wanted my character to be really good at grappling, yeah, I would as soon as possible give him the improved grapple feat. Yeah, 
this class at first at this prestige class at its first level gives you the improved grapple feat. Why wouldn't I already have that? Yeah. Like why would they not assume you would already have that right. ability? Because you you can't qualify for this until minimum sixth level. Right. Maybe a couple levels after that. Yeah. So whereas a fighter gets bonus feats. A fighter or a monk, monks can get improved grapple at first level for that's free. That's true. Exactly. Yeah. So like like you're more than likely already gonna have this. Yeah. So like you know if like if you're gonna be the grapple guy, you're gonna be the grapple guy from from the get go. Like right. you're gonna put all your points in strength. You're gonna you know put all your you know s- skill points in escape artists. Maybe I guess you know. Although again, this is sort of like like if you're the guy who's grappling, who's gonna be good at grappling. Why do you need points in ex- escape artist? Yeah, I don't know. I think um, because it did also require that uh, clever wrestling, which was more about escaping a grapple. I don't know. It couldn't hurt to be good at both. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Like you're going to be you're going to be in the thick of things. It Mm -hmm. might happen that the tides get turned on you. You know, you never know. If you're you're trying to grapple something that's larger than you, it it might, you know, the tables might turn. You might have to be like, okay, all right, let me see if I can get out of this. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, you're in more danger of being grappled if you're the guy going around grabbing people. (laughs) Right. So it it is a little odd, but. You know, I, yeah. I guess I can see the logic. I see maybe like swap those, you yeah. know, so like you, you require the improved grapple feet and then you get and you need uh, club wrestling at you, first level. Yeah. You get that for free at, at first level. Yeah. Because, again, you might not be thinking of escaping grapples when you're trying to be the grapple guy. Sure. But if you get that for free as part of your class. Cool. Um, and then they get uh, they get some extra stuff where like at, at the basically at the end of this prestige class mm-hmm. that you can kill a guy by grappling him. Oh, like okay. you just, if you grapple them for three consecutive rounds, the the enemy has to make a fortitude save, uh, which is DC ten plus the the uh, reaping maulers class level, so a maximum of five mm-hmm. uh, plus the wisdom modifier. Okay, so uh, probably like an eighteen or nineteen or something. Yeah, which is you know a, a you know decent a decent uh, a DC like that that's high for fifth edition standards. That's like uh, about about. Middle for, uh, for, middle, for, you know, 3.5 stain. Maybe high depending on the, the opponent. Sure. Um, but at the end of the third round, uh, they make that fortitude save. And if they fail it, they die. That's, you just, you just crazy. You, you just choke them out. Yeah. Um, earlier on in the, in the prestige class, it's the same mechanics. It's, a, it's the same rules, but you, uh, you knock them out instead. You oh, knock okay. Them, okay. You knock them out for, I think, 1d3 rounds. Uh, so cool. you put them in the sleeper hold. Yeah, you know. So, uh, but yeah, it's the same thing. It's just a D. The DC is the same. Uh, it's the same calculation for the DC. Sure. It's obviously, going to be lower because you're a lower class level. But you knock them out instead of killing them, and then I guess you know at that point you can choose wh- what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. So that's in a nutshell grappling in 3.5 yeah a little extra in there. But uh, let me, if I could, just say one more thing about uh, enemies with improved grab. Yeah. Um. So improved grab I mentioned is if if that enemy hits with an attack they automatically start a grapple yeah which sucks to right. be fighting against so they're doing like their normal attack normal normal just... attack and damage so they're grappling at no cost basically right yeah and then also um they there's some ability there's there's a little addendum onto that where if they want to they can make the grapple check at like a minus ten to grapple without like being limited uh, basically they can continue to attack and do whatever else while also keeping you grappled so like i maybe maybe a wolf is a bad example because i don't think wolves get it but let's say there is there's a monster called a uh, choker which is like a little humanoid guy that can like cling to walls and he has really long arms they can grapple they get improved grab with their their like slap attack or whatever so they can hit you start grappling you and then if they want to take a huge penalty but they've got you grappled and they don't take any penalties to do anything else. So they can continue to attack the rest of the party mm. while they have you grappled. Just their arm is just over holding you up against the wall <laughs> or something. Yeah. Also, swallow hole. Yes. Oh, I do. is oh, yeah. awful. Oh, goodness. When something like uh, the, I won't say the Tarasque, I'll say a shark. I, I happen to have experience with <laughs> being swallowed by sharks. So if a shark hits you with its bite attack, uh-huh. has improved grab, so it immediately starts grappling you. Right. If it succeeds on a grapple, you are now in its stomach. Right. You, which I, I guess is the equi- their equivalent of pinning you. Yeah. So while you are in its stomach, you can make a grapple check. If you succeed, you can get out of its stomach, but you are still grappled. I right. believe you're basically still you. You get back into its mouth, yes. <laughs> not in its stomach. And then 
what I mentioned earlier is really crappy is that then if you succeed on that second grapple, you're still within melee range. So if you try to swim away, I guess, and you're probably swimming really slowly because you probably don't have a swim speed and the shark does, it gets a free attack on you because you moved out of its threat range. So it gets an attack of opportunity on that attack of opportunity. It deals damage and you are now grappled again. Yeah. It's that's it's rough. Awful. And then <laughs> while you're in its stomach, you don't have to grapple your way out. If you have a light slashing weapon, slashing or piercing weapon, you can use a grapple check to attack its stomach. If you deal enough damage in one hit, you escape out of a hole through its stomach. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a, there's a way out, but like if you're yeah. using a big two handed weapon, like I was, it is so awful mm-hmm. to be swallowed by yeah. a shark. Yeah. And the, uh, in the age of worms, not the age of worms campaign, the, in the Ebron campaign. Yeah. Uh, my, uh, I'm still going to put in the age of worms ding there though. <laughs> <laughs> so in the Ebron campaign, my Warforged had a built in, um, at a built in light weapon. Okay. That uh Jay even gave it the uh gave it like the like the there maybe there was a there might have been an actual enchantment for it, but he gave it an enchantment mm-hmm. that gave it a, like a bonus uh when I was grappled or something like that. Okay. It, it, it was basically it was an anti grappling Yeah. You know, yeah. because I was in melee and charging in a lot, I you know, would sometimes get grabbed by, you know, monsters and stuff. Mm-hmm. So like he gave me this like it was sort of a, like it came out. I think it. I think it was drawn as a free action if I was ever grappled. Like it was just sort of like a defense mechanism sort of yeah. thing, which is kind of cool. Uh, one of the best defenses against being grappled in third edition and three point five uh-huh. was the freedom of movement spell. Oh, among yeah. other things, it made it so that you were immune to grappling. You could grapple if you wanted to grapple, Mm-mm. but if at any point you did not want to be grappled anymore, and you are being grappled yourself, you just. You did not suffer any of fil- any ill effects of grappling. I, I, you know what? I've never really understood the freedom of movement spell. It just does whatever you want it to do, Jeff. That's that's all. <laughs> like, are you are you like turning into goo and slipping out of things? Do you phase through things? Like, <sighs> that's a good question. Is, does the freedom of movement spell does that make it so you basically ha- like you can swim? Like you you don't take any penalties for being underwater. You you don't gain a swim speed. Okay, but you don't take any of the like AC penalty. You don't take any of the. Uh, penalty on attack rolls. Okay, so it just makes it so you're you're mo- like you're moving th- like you can move your body through water as if it's air. I guess, yeah. But you still have to like physically swim. Sure, sure. Yeah, there have been people who have ruled freedom of movement as being like, oh, you fell into the lake. Oh, you fell to the bottom and hit the ground. Right. That's it's not really I, how like it works. what level spell is that? Like fourth, fourth. I mean, it's 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 a. It's a it's a po- it's not a low level spell, right? But. No, like I, if it's, if, I feel like if it's any more than a first or second level spell, it's not going to do that. Right. Like it's like you're you're in control of the magical power. Like higher level spells are rarely. Oops, I didn't think about physics. Now I'm dead. Right. Anyway, Ugh. um, so so your freedom of movement was very very powerful against grappling, um, but basically just be a fighter with high strength and you will grapple everything all day all the time. Okay. So all right, that was only one edition. <laughs> We are very late in this episode, but don't worry. Don't Uh, worry. uh, The other two editions are very, very simple. Um, Okay. So I'm going to talk about fourth edition first. Yep. Go for it. Not first edition fourth. I'm going to talk about fourth edition first. Gotcha. Uh, So one of of the things you can do with your action in combat, because the actions were a little bit different than they were in third edition. Right. That's right. Uh, So you, you spend your action to do what is called a grab. You can only do this against a creature that is one size category larger than you. Or smaller, so mm-hmm. similar to before. Yeah. You make a strength attack. So you, you do make an attack roll based off of your strength score. Mm-hmm. That was important because in fourth edition, you had attacks. Depending on your class, you had attacks that went off of all different ability scores. Right. So you make an att- a strength attack versus reflex. Now, this wasn't an opposed roll. In fourth edition, reflex was a defense. So it was a, a static number right. on the enemy's stat block. Yeah, that's that, that was sort of like saves in that? In... Uh, yeah, well... Yeah, so like fortitude, reflex, and will were just static numbers. Right. It was essentially like you rolled a 10 on your reflex save. Yeah, I gotcha. You know? So you you make a strength attack versus the reflex. So essentially you're just rolling an attack roll against a number on their snap block. Yeah. You don't add any modifiers for your weapon because you're not attacking with a weapon. If you succeed, the enemy has the immobilized condition. Mm. That means that they can't move from that square. That's it. They, they are, their movement drops to zero, but other than that, they can still attack. They could, they can do whatever they want. Um, you can end that as a free action whenever you want to. 
they can attempt to escape on their turn by making by spending their action to by by spending their action to make an acrobatics or a athletics check. And again, that's not an opposed role. It was athletics versus your fortitude or acrobatics versus your dexterity. Okay. So again, you're just rolling against a set number. Right. Okay. Yeah, cuz fourth edition, yeah, they weren't really saves, they're more like different forms of AC in a way. Yes. It was, yeah, just, yeah. it was it was it was a DC that the that somebody had to meet to beat your reflexes or beat your fortitude or whatever. Yeah. So like you had AC, you had reflex, fortitude, and will. Gotcha. Um, and then if you if they succeed on that check mm-hmm. as part of the action, they get a free five foot shift away that doesn't provoke. Oh, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you could you could easily still just advance and attack them on right. your turn, but it was just a cool little thing. They got a, they got out of your immediate range. For free, basically. Yeah, so instead of having to deal with that shark situation. Exactly. So while you have someone grabbed, you you have to continue... Every round, you have to spend a minor action, so a bonus action in 5th edition terms, gotcha. to maintain it. But wow. you don't have to make any additional checks unless they're trying to escape. Okay. Other than that, you could, you could have them grabbed with your free hand and use your sword to attack the other guy. They just can't move from that square. Oh. So pretty simple. Yeah. And then... There's a, a few things that will automatically end the grab. Mm-hmm. Like I said, you can let it go as a free action. And then any condition that prevents you from taking opportunity attacks, such as being dazed, being stunned, uh, being unconscious, you immediately end the, gra- the grab. Sure. Also, if you voluntarily move away from the enemy so that you, they are no longer within uh, melee range of you, uh-huh. the effect, the grab ends. Or any forced movement on either of you that moves them out of your range ends the grab. Okay. So if uh if an ally has an enemy grabbed and I hit the al- I hit the enemy with an attack that pushes them a square, the grab ends. Sure. Uh similarly one of their allies could do that to you to knock you out of range of them and then it would end. So anything that forcibly pushes you to a part ends the grab. Gotcha. As well as any condition that stops you from yeah. taking opportunity attacks. Is there a way to like move the person while you're grappling grappling them? Uh, yes, there is. You can you can spend a you can spend an action to make a strength check versus their fortitude. Again, you don't add any weapon modifiers. If you succeed, you, as part of that action, you move half your speed and you take them with you. Oh, okay. So that's so. part of that action. Okay, cool. Yeah, part of that same action, and that's it. All right. That is all there is to, to grappling <laughs> in. I'm not trying to, to that is nothing. You did a great job. Jeff. Okay. You, you performed ander, admirably. Oh, no. I am so thankful that you offered to take 3.5. <laughs> that was great. So that oh, was fourth man. edition. Pretty, pretty simple. Even including fourth editions, just difference in how a lot of stuff worked. Yeah. And then fifth edition, fifth edition is, is very similar to fourth edition. Yeah. In that regard, it's relatively simple. Um, on your turn, you spend your uh, you spend the attack action. So it's kind of like in three point five, if you have multiple attacks, you only have to spend one of them right. in order to do it. Yeah. So you make a a special melee attack, which is a grapple. Again, if you're able to make multiple attacks, this replaces one of them. So mm-hmm. if you fail, you can try again. Um, the target can't be more than one size category larger than you. Right. Again, just like both of the other uh, the other editions, you. Don't have to make an attack roll first. Instead, you just make a strength athletics check, uh-huh. at which point the target makes either a strength athletics or dexterity acrobatics check. Right. So it's just one single opposed, opposed check. Yeah. If you succeed, they gain the grappled condition. If you fail, they don't. Uh, I'll get to the grappled condition in a second. To escape a grapple. So if they are grappled, they have the grappled condition. Mm-hmm. They uh, can use their action to make a... They have to make a strength or dexterity. Again, athletics or acrobatics check contested by your strength athletics check. Mm-hmm. If they succeed, they're no longer grappled. They don't have that condition anymore. If they fail, they're still still grappled. While they're grappled, anytime you move, you bring them with you however your speed is halved. Yeah. Unless they are two or more size sizes smaller than you. So if they're small enough, you your just, speed isn't you're reduced. You're just carrying them at yeah. that point. So no check is needed. If you move, mm-hmm. you take them with you. Yeah. You just move at half speed. I am using this to great effect in my <laughs> in my in one of the one of the campaigns I'm playing in right now. Yeah. Um I'll I'll I'll, I'll talk about that later. Okay. And then uh, just one more thing, the grappled condition. Yeah. A grappled creature's speed becomes zero and it can't benefit from any bonus to its speed. So like in fourth edition, they can't move from that square. Right. 
the condition ends if the grappler is incapacitated, which is its own condition. I think you can yeah. extrapolate what you need from that. The effect, uh, the condition also ends if an effect removes the grappled creature from the reach of the grappler or grappling effect, such as when a creature is hurled away by the Thunderwave spell. So similar to very, the... very similar to fourth edition, mm -hmm. but a little bit easier because you don't have to make that check to move a grappled creature. Do you mind if I add a couple things? Go for it. Because, like I said, I'm, I'm playing a character who uses grapple a lot in yeah. fifth edition. Um, Okay, so there is there's uh, a couple feats mm -hmm. in fifth edition that adds to the grapple stuff. One of one of them I think is just like ta a tavern brawler. I think it's called. Okay, and it makes it so as part of an attack, if if you're attacking with an unarmed or an improvised weapon, mm -hmm. uh, if you're using like if you're using an unarmed attack or using an improv improvised weapon, as part of an attack, you can automatically attempt a grapple. Right. So like you know you can punch them, and then because your fist is right there, you grapple. Okay. Or, or if you're I, hitting him over the head with a chair, you're you're kind of like you can kind of like grapple him, grapple him yeah. with a chair. Or I, I like actually because I have that feat on uh, my character, the shoulder. Oh, the shoulder. And I I never really use the improvised weapons part or the grappling part. I just hit him with my shoulder. But I always pictured the I pictured Jackie Chan fighting someone with a ladder. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You the ladder. Swing a ladder and you basically like hook them into the ladder and you know they can't move. <laughs> I'll make a character called the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> and then there is the grappler feat, which uh, you gain advantage on attack rolls against creatures that you are gra grappling. Mm -hmm. So, like while you're grappling somebody, you're you get you get advantage on attacking with them. Okay. And like I'm pretty sure in fifth edition grapple uh, grab grabbing, you just need to have uh, just a, a free hand. You just need a free hand. Like um, yep. so you you know, you can be holding. I, I, I'm pretty sure it's like you can't use like two handed weapons, but you know you can use a I, I think of like a light a light weapon or a hand you know or something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think it just needs to be yeah, just, just any any one handed weapon. Yeah, and then uh, the grappler feet gives you the option to pin them, which makes them uh, oh, okay. Which once you uh, you make another grapple check, and then you were you and the uh, the target are both uh, have the restrained condition, right? Which restrained is you have disadvantage on attacks. Things mm -hmm. have advantage against you. Your and then your speed is zero, and so on. Sure. Um. And then what's interesting, uh, what's very interesting here is the, there's, uh, there's an extra part to this, this feat mm -hmm. that doesn't apply to any actual rules. Oh, like it's an oversight. It, like it, they left it in accidentally. There must've been something. So okay. it, creatures that are one size larger than you don't automatically succeed on checks to es escape your grapple. That's not a thing. Oh, that's not a thing. That was just something that's something that they, they took that was in there at some point. They took it out, but forgot to remove it from this, this feet. So this feet has an extra thing to it that has no, it just kind of muddies the, the, yeah, the rest of the rules. Yeah. I mean, it, I, like it makes me, it makes me think that either. The, yeah. they should change it to something else like it, does that make this that makes this feat less powerful technically yeah because they probably had that in mind when they when they balance the feet right because you gotta and also when you think about the restraining thing mm -hmm. like you're making it easier for things to attack the thing you're pinning but you're also making it easier to attack yeah, you so there's, sounds there's like a kind of, of a crummy feat it's kind of a, yeah it's kind of a crummy feat um, the advantage on attacking things, which is which is kind of cool. So if you're a rogue, yeah, with sneak attack, you can sneak attack every you, every round. You can sneak attack because you're getting advantage anytime you're attacking them while you're, while you're grappling them. So you're yeah. just like you're holding them and you're stabbing them, you know. <laughs> um, uh, but my uh, my current character is a druid, and he can turn into, you know, he's the he's a moon circle, so he can turn into like CR one mm -hmm. uh, beasts. Uh, a lot of which have bite attacks that just automatically grapple. Yeah. So like it's a uh, giant toad is great. What? Giant toad. Okay. Giant toad is great. Now, technically giant toad, you'd have to be a level four druid, I think to do because mm -hmm. it has, a, it has a swim speed. Sure. So giant toad has a bite attack. If it hits with a bite attack, mm -hmm. it, the, it automatically grapples and they are restrained. So it is like it, it goes right to a pin. Oh my goodness! Yeah, it's rough. So like the set, like if you contact them, if you if I hit them with the with the with the bite, they take bite damage and mm -hmm. they are immediately restrained. So Man. they are grappled, so I can move them around, and anything that tries to attack them gets advantage. And then again, with the and the giant toad also has swallow hole. Of course, is, of course. Which is uh, you use? I think I think you just use an attack 
you have to make a yeah you have to make another attack on a successful attack they are swallowed whole and then they take damage from like stomach acid or sure something sure like that. but um yeah it can be kind of rough um and the the other form that my guy takes is from um uh, it's from the Critter Compendium, compendium which is on the uh, DM's Guild. Mm-hmm. Uh, I ran this by the DM first, just just <laughs> because it because it is a pretty like I feel like it's a fairly powerful one. It like it's it's the form I use most of the time because like the Toad is fun because it can swallow things, but not you know that's not always going to be the best the best option. Yeah, it's fun, but it's not you know um, anyway. Uh, the the um, sorry, the giant chameleon uh, has a tongue attack, range yeah. attack. Yeah. So it's a rain. It's a ranged, basically grapple. Well, it's not ranged grapple. It, if it hits them, if it hits them, they have to make a strength check, or they get pulled within five feet. Yeah. If they get pulled with a five within five feet, I get a free, or a bonus action bite. Oh my goodness! And then that bite can then grapple them, <laughs> and restrain them. So like in one action, they can hit take damage from a tongue, damage from a bite, and then be restrained at like, I think it's like a. 15 foot range that's it's rough so yeah druids druids everybody go <laughs> go play a druid yeah druid <laughs> druids are have druids in fifth edition have been said by many people to be overpowered yeah i mostly agree Not yeah complete. i mean I'm, I'm sure there's ways to counter but Ab- uh, absolutely but fact, yeah. it is extra work for the dm definitely yeah okay well <laughs> I'm I'm gonna call that right there. So so we're done. We're done talking about grappling. Let us no. never talk about grappling ever again. Gabe Gabe, in order to end this episode, you have to uh, succeed in an opposed grapple check with me. So you got a thirteen. Yeah, I got a thirteen. I got a seven. So what does that mean? <laughs> well, that means we're still in the episode. Oh game. no! <laughs> One more question. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so again, thank you so much, Carl. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Carl. Thank you. <laughs> and just just because I am going to purposely forget everything that we said in this episode, no, because I'm going to have to edit this episode. So I I guarantee you this is going to be etched on my brain forever. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna very very briefly go over the social media discussion questions for this week. Oh yeah. Uh, so we may not we may not uh, answer we not we not read all of them. I think like last episode we we spent quite a while on on that. So I I think from now on in general I'm just gonna try to maybe just each of us pick just a couple of our favorite uh, sure yeah. ones, ones to read. Um, but I mean we'll still read all of them. So like don't don't. Don't choose not to to yeah. post on social media because you may not get on the show. We will definitely read all of them. We'll just probably only read a few of them unless maybe the rest of the episode was a little light. Yeah. Uh, so last week's question was a dragon just added you as a friend on Facebook. What sort of social media posts would you expect from them? <laughs> Do you recall what uh, your answer was, Jeff? Mm, I can't remember. Uh, I remember I said something about they would post like pictures of adventurers and then you realize they were posting their their food oh right yeah like <laughs> taking instagram po- pictures of your of your like of your dinner or something yes, yes. <laughs> that's uh good. so uh, a lot of people said like selfies which you know makes sense right yeah. so uh peter said selfies with their horde yeah yep. yeah <laughs> our friend dave posted and there were a lot of emojis in this i don't know how well i'm gonna be able to get across <laughs> quite <laughs> the 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 spirit of his post but right he said lol these adventurers keep trying to steal from me Emoji of a chest, emoji of a ring, emoji of a diamond. Then things get interesting. Several fire emojis and then like a piece of chicken. Like a yeah, drumstick. A drumstick. A, a drumstick Hashtag emoji. go home. Hashtag I'm literally colossal. Hashtag can't level up if you're dead. <laughs> uh, pretty good. <laughs> Some other stuff too, but but there's just there's just so much here. Oh my goodness! Uh, Nathan H said lots of posts about cool magic items in their hoard, and occasional barbecue invites that are ambiguous <laughs> about whether I'm invited to eat food or be food. <laughs> I, pretty good. I like the woke up like this with a hero between their teeth. <laughs> yes, that was from Sean M. Um, David E said about he said something about uh, uh, gold and gem collecting games, and I was thinking oh, like yeah. the the gems that you collect in the game for the microtransactions are actual gems. Oh, sure. <laughs> you're playing Candy Crush, or you're sorry, you're playing. Uh, I guess it was Candy Crush. You're playing Candy Crush, and like yeah, you got to spend actual gem and gold to <laughs> to advance. 
Randolph says, definitely trying to sell me on some multi-level marketing scheme. Essential dragon oils, charred villager scented candles, mutton protein shakes. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and then uh, Jason S. said, Facebook will give you bags upon bags of gold if you just share this post. This is 100% real. Don't miss out on your chance. Increase your hoard today. Oh, no. <laughs> so, you know, some of those, some of those. Yeah, a bunch of sh yeah, shared posts. <laughs> on uh, Reddit, we only got a couple. Hoosier Trip said, Halfling tastes like chicken. And then the Red Dragon posts, I had heartburn last night again. <laughs> uh, Prozno said, tags for clickbait articles like, did you know your elected official could be a dragon? <laughs> or is there a dragon horde near you? Here's the signs. And only guys named Jeff, how dragons can be picky about eats. <laughs> What? I guess they, they only want to eat guys named Jeff. Oh, no. Because <laughs> you're the one who's interacting with all the dragons. Oh, the no. Um, yeah, because I'm always going into their hordes. Oh, crap. That's. Oh, no. You. I, I just realized I've been going into all these dragons hordes like every week. Yeah. I'm, it's, making, I'm making a lot of enemies here. You are making a lot of enemies. And then uh, just one last thing. Uh, Noah Wizard on, on Twitter said, in theory, dragons are supposed to be really smart due to long lifespans, right? Like one school of thought says players should not be able to defeat a dragon because a dragon could have taken 100 years and played D&D &D 40 hours a week and lived through every scenario. So obviously I'd expect the freshest memes that I won't be getting anywhere else. <laughs> I actually kind of disagree. I feel like they're old people, so they would have bad memes, but eh, right, yeah, whatever. But, whatever. Yeah, like, yeah, it'd be old people. So like dad, dad memes, dad jokes. Right, right. So uh, so yeah, that was uh, those were some of the answers to uh, this week's social media discussion question. Mm -hmm. uh, next week's question... Similar, kind of a similar vibe. Yeah. Imagine your character. So whatever your character is, imagine your character has access to the internet. What were the last five searches in their Google history? <laughs> Let's try to try to keep this uh, PG if we can. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I haven't really put a lot of thought on this one, but do you have any ideas? Um, oh, yeah. Uh, like, how do you get into the Tomb of Horrors? <laughs> okay, there you go. Uh, probably, like, I was going to say MapQuest, but that just shows how old I am. Do people still use MapQuest? <laughs> Google Maps. There would probably be a Google Maps mm -hmm. to the Tomb of Horrors. Yeah. Um, and then there's, a, there's like, a heap of bodies of people who are using Apple Maps uh, just, out, just to the <laughs> right of it. There you go. There you go. Um, yeah, I imagine there would probably be... Would there be more urban legends or less urban legends in a fantasy world? Ooh, you know what? There would probably be more. Snopes would probably be like the world's most powerful diviner or something. So that like if you go to I would, my character would probably go to Snopes.com and look up, you know, whatever divinations. <laughs> sure. Uh, um, high Archmage Snopes has been doing. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm sorry. I don't. We just came up with this. I haven't had a. I haven't come up with a ton of answers. An another but. another one that's going to age us a little bit. Uh, the like at, like Jeeves. Oh ask, my goodness, ask Jeeves. Ask Jeeves. Jeeves was uh, the elf uh, elf butler that you would ask stuff because he's been around a long time. So uh, yeah, so we'll, yeah. we'll see what our what our listeners are able to come up with yeah, between yeah. this week and and next week. So yeah. So if your character has access to the internet, what were the last five searches in their Google history? <laughs> so have, have some fun with that. You know, whatever. So that will do it for questions for today. Uh, so now that we have essentially just been killed by grappling because it bored us to death, let's uh, let's sit back. Mm -hmm. Let's relax now that we're not being grappled. We're not being choked by the, the specter of grappling uh -huh. hanging over our heads. <laughs> and let's toss another log onto the funeral pyre. I would love to throw grappling onto the funeral pyre. To be, uh, <laughs> yes, to be perfectly please. honest. <laughs> okay. Our funeral pyre for this week is very short. It is from Reddit user Furtive Sloth. And uh, Furtive Sloth says, Vaporized by suitcase nuke while riding giant alien eel. What? Who hasn't been in that case? Who hasn't hasn't been in that situation? Am I right? Uh, Am I right? We've all been there. Uh, all right. <laughs> you haven't been uh, riding a giant alien eel, alien eel, holding your suitcase nuke when oh. it just went off. <laughs> just accidentally, just accidentally went off. <laughs> Is there not several parts of this that are applicable to everybody? <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the number of characters I've lost, lost to that exact situation. Exactly. exactly. Zero, Gabe. Zero. Oh, oh. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Well, okay. Now that you mention it, 
<laughs> I guess this has never happened to anybody. Oh my goodness. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, that was uh, that was from Furtive Sloth. So let's let's raise a glass in memory of this unnamed individual who uh, got a little too slippery with the eel. <laughs> I don't know. I've been we've been going through grappling for like four hours yeah. now. Let's just let's just forget about this. Clank. Clank. Yeah, our brains have been grappled to mush. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, if anybody would like to submit questions for us to discuss, items for the Dragon's Horde, or stories for the Funeral Pyre, please email us at interpartyconflict at gmail.com. Please, no questions about grappling. <laughs> please. Oh, no. For show notes, links to media mentioned in the show, and running lists of questions and magic items, go to interpartyconflict.com. Join the discussion on social media. Find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash interpartyconflict, or our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash interpartyconflict. Conflict, or on Twitter at In Party Conflict for our weekly social media questions. Your answers might end up on the show. Find us on iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher, YouTube, anywhere you download podcasts. Please rate, review, subscribe, or just tell a friend. If you'd like to support the show, check out our rewards at patreon.com slash interpartyconflict. There's a few different tiers, so anything you can spare, even a dollar a month, would go towards making the show better and you'll get bonus content for it. Jeff, tell us about FriendQuest. FriendQuest is a YouTube channel where we play video games. Yes. And so as we said earlier, check in on September 3rd on Labor Day. We're going to be doing a big stream of arcade games from Mm -hmm. 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Time. So uh, check in. Send us some requests for games, and uh, we'll have some fun uh, some fun stuff. Yeah. Speaking of arcade games, if you'd like to submit some of your childhood memories of going to the arcade, I'm putting them into a little side project called the Arcade Memories Podcast. So you can uh, send your, your memories to arcadememoriespodcast at gmail.com. Also, head over to bit.ly slash interpartyconflict to take a short survey about our show, what you like, what you don't like, etc. And just for taking it, you'll get two free printable board games courtesy of Mary and Tom over at hollandspiel.com. And our music is made by Boxcat Games from Nameless the Hackers RPG. So, Jeff, until next time... Wait, Gabe, one more thing about grappling. No, I'm done. Gabe, I'm, I'm done Gabe. talking about grappling. Gabe, come back. I'm, I'm going to make a grapple check. <laughs>